Hi guys! You should talk, you should <laughs> start us off talking like the YouTube videos. Hey guys, we are back. The two sisters here. Mm -mm. We just finished filming our uh, She In Haul and it went really, really well. I had so much fun filming a haul. I haven't done it in such a long time. I always enjoy it when I film with my sister. And she gives me new advice and different clothing style that I would never try in the first place. I always push her out of her comfort zone. And I'm like, try this or wear colour. Because she tends to go for the same style, but just yeah. in loads of different colours. Uh, make sure you check it out. It's uploaded it's on already on my channel. Guys. So with my sister, I have to like think of like topic ideas for her. Because <laughs> I love filming stuff like this. But sometimes for my own content, I feel like... The clips are a bit longer, so I feel like this is like an extension of me. <laughs> it's always great when she appears on my channel. You guys love it. For some reason, people are like, oh my god, I love it on your channel because your sister and you are always together. And I think that's so true. In my, every my vlog, you've been on my vlog. I really, really enjoy it. And I feel like even when I watch a video, I'm like, oh, that was like really, really fun. It's actually really, really good to actually like sit down and chat with you guys. We would actually love to hear if you guys have any topic ideas that we can actually talk about. Because me and my sister are like so open, but sometimes we can't even think about what to say because we could yeah. talk about anything at the same time i really love girl chat videos like this so i thought oh let's film this on my sister's channel so i really want to talk about toxic relationships i feel like this whole video is not going to be a vlog it's more just like chatting I yeah because we've got a lot of things to say about this subject obviously i've been with my boyfriend for 12 years and i've dated other guys before and do you know what i actually have noticed like toxic traits that have happened to me, toxic traits that I have done myself. So I thought maybe we can talk about that. My yeah. sister's actually gone through quite a, a uh, rough relationship um, herself. <laughs> yeah, I've been through quite a few relationships where, well, one relationship that was very toxic and I want to discuss that with you. And I think this is a really relatable topic, especially a lot of us girls, We, when we're going through it, we, we don't think it's a toxic relationship. And then when you review it, I think it is a screwed up situation while you're going through it you might think that that's the norm i didn't feel that it was toxic at the time but as you grow and as you evolve you realize oh my god all the telltale signs and it's so funny that when your friends are telling you at that moment in time you don't think oh like you don't understand from my view what i'm going through yeah i and love him he's yeah. good for me he's so mm. nice to me and blah blah and you kind of defend them it's one of those situations where only you will know when it's time to leave everyone else can say they're two pieces but at the end of the day, they're not actually with them, they're not staying with them. When the time is right, you will know, and you will know when you had enough. I thought we can maybe tell our kind of little story times of like when we were in a toxic relationship and what we think a toxic relationship involves. If you guys don't know, my sister was actually engaged. I was with my first boyfriend for around about five and a half years, so it was such a long time. And at the time, it was a, such a roller coaster. And being in a relationship when you're such a young age, you feel like your first love is all you can think about and you just want to spend all your time with that person and anything that that person does, you just feel like, oh, the heavens are all aligning, the stars. And what age was you when you first dated him? Uh, I think I was around about 19 to up until I was like 25 or 24. Okay. Has any of your past relationship that you've been in that you think was toxic? I feel like there was definitely traits of being in a toxic relationship. I know sometimes I could even be the toxic one, but you don't even know, right? You just do it automatically. Sometimes when me and Grant have an argument, my first reaction is to just say really horrible things that could probably be seen as like a toxic relationship and i do think that that's down to the way that maybe we were brought up as well we all say this and joke around this it's like in our lee jeans that we have such hot tempers we definitely got that from our dad i also feel there's certain people that tech brings it out of you because yeah. i've been in other relationships i'm still the same type of person guys my personality hasn't changed that much however from one person, you deal with the situation completely compared yeah. to another relationship. It all depends on the other person, how they react to it. There's certain people that know how to freaking grind you down. Yeah, and they know what button to push. With my first relationship, I was in there for five years. Out of that five years, when I was in that relationship, all I can think of was the first year was all plain sailing. Everything was perfect. And then the next four years, everything was like, we argue consistently, we fight. There was actually physical abuse going on. Yeah. I would probably say that is probably the first telltale sign of a toxic relationship. Everyone's tolerance level is different. I feel like as soon as there's violence involved, they could apologise, they could say it won't happen again. Unfortunately, I always find that in the majority of times, when shit gets down to it, if violence is involved in it i feel like that's when it's time to be like okay we both yeah. need to evaluate if this is healthy for each other when i felt i was going through that emotion i always self-blame i'm like i made him do that 
because the way I react and I could have dealt with things properly. But when you think about it, you're like, no, that person should have known how to talk to you, how to communicate effectively so it wouldn't take that much anger and become an explosive argument. It was such like simple things that we would discuss about and it becomes like a massive argument. I can't even think of some of the topics that we would argue about. It's just like minute things. Now, why does that even bother me? Even though me and Grant have been together for a long time, whenever we have big arguments, it's always about small little things. It's, it's never about cheating or it's never about anything crazy, but it's always like really small things that we kind of blow out into proportion. Toxic traits is violence, any form of abuse, mental abuse, physical abuse, uh, verbal abuse. Obviously, that's up to you if you want to put up with that. I'm just here to say that like, if you think that's normal, it's not normal. With my last relationship, he was very manipulative. So there were certain things that he did and he knew that I would never walk away. It had to be something like really major for me to walk away. He just took me for granted basically and I would always run back. And that was the consistent cycle. I kept running back no matter how badly he treated me. There is something that's really important when your partner doesn't give you the attention that you need. Therefore, you, you, you feel deprived of it and then you do crazy stuff to try and get their person's attention. Even if it's like a negative type of attention, you want to cause arguments so that they will start. I can understand that definitely now obviously looking back it doesn't make sense like why would you do that it's so stupid if the person is not treating you the way that you want to treat you sometimes you do want to like push a few buttons i feel like i've definitely gone through like arguments where maybe the other person isn't arguing back and they're just quiet maybe for me i even say things to kind of get a, both them yeah to try to yeah. get a response that's not normal guys <laughs> i want to share like a little story time regarding to how i broke up with my ex how i ended that toxic relationship I felt that at the time I would never break out of it. That moment in time, everything just clicked and I knew I had to leave and I couldn't go back mm. because I thought I would consistently always run back to him. Mm. We was on and off for some time. It was around about a year. We keep coming back on and off and on and off. We got back together because he'd done this very elaborate thing. We went on holiday, oh. if you remember. I booked like a whole entire holiday with me and my sister. And then for some reason, he just showed out at the blue. <laughs> he tracked down the hotel, he booked himself a room. He just literally like showed up on the holiday. One of the reasons why I got back with him was, <laughs> it's so funny because you know when we was on that holiday, obviously I don't have the most money. I tried to book like a four star hotel for all three of us, me and my two younger sister. And that hotel is four star. When we arrived there, he stunk, tweet, <laughs> drowned at the pool. And it was such a bad experience. So when he showed up at the hotel and then he was like, kind of like, flashing all the money and say I can get you a better hotel, a better, nicer environment. Because we were having such a bad experience, we were like, okay, let's, let's go. <laughs> he had because like a five-star hotel and I'm like, oh, I can get used to this life. See, <laughs> that's when you got back with me or that's when you That's when up. I got back. Well, I haven't got, I haven't oh. got onto the story where we broke up yet. Okay. I remember the look on your face when he arrived. I, I didn't like her ex-boyfriend. Why had, did we, you we, like him? I can't remember now, but it feels like a lifetime ago. I remember thinking like their relationship was just so annoying. Got together for a few months, broke up after a few months, and it was one of those annoying friendships. I'm sure you guys might have like experienced that with your best friend or someone that you know. You know those relationships that just constantly get together and then they break up and then you give them all the advice and then they get back together and it's like, oh, it's just so frustrating. And obviously now I can look back and realise that is not my burden to carry. If she wants to put herself through that, then that's up to her. I remember feeling so annoyed at him. I just felt like he was just so annoying. I can't remember <laughs> what it was. Me and you wasn't ever that close when we were together. I never really communicated with other people regarding my relationship. But the thing was, my whole entire family knew. I didn't have to tell them. They could just see. Observing how we argue and everything and everyone take a back seat because I'm crazy when they see me explode they don't know what to say they just leave me alone they can see all this happening in the background my family has never been the type to get involved in someone's relationship or give advice yeah. you kind of just have to learn as you go I wish that our family came from a more background where they give you advice like this is not healthy <laughs> having said that even though you give that person that advice I, would, I wouldn't have listened anyway i remember it was always a case of like they would argue and then she would be like crazy be like no you can't leave and he would always want to leave i remember thinking like just let him leave <laughs> why are you keep holding him back like, at that moment in time i wanted to resolve the issue he kept wanting to go fuck off and come back three days later and think everything is okay the problem was the communication wasn't there. He felt that when he could just leave and do whatever he wanted, disappear for three days and then come back and things would all be normal. Yes, 
majority of the time we can just ignore it and brush it under the carpet. Now I realise that it's so unhealthy. You need to discuss about it. Talk about what went wrong, how you can change, what you both are trying to do to compromise and achieve a better outcome. At that moment in time, he wasn't like that. He wanted to ignore it and that pisses me off so much. I've never had a boyfriend since then that ever did that to me. If I felt angry, they would kind of calm down and they will stay there and talk to me and talk to me in a calm tone instead of swearing at me, instead of saying other stuff that adding more fuel to the fire. This is not even a story that I'm mean. Sorry guys, this is a long one, okay? But get some snacks, okay? It's juicy. Okay, so I got back with the boyfriend. This was a breaking straw. We hadn't been together in such a long time. We just recently got back together. That night was one of my friend's birthday. It was a big birthday. It was his 40th. All my friends are gathering and that time I went through a phase where because we've been broken up, I partied a lot and I made new friends and I'm sure he didn't like the idea as well. Oh, that's another sign toxic when they want you to not have friends oh. and they want all your time to be dedicated that is to them. Very toxic. I was making new friends. I felt that he he felt threatened because I was having new friends, having a new different life that he wasn't used to because he's so used to me being cocoon at home. Now I had a new adventure, I had potential to meet other people and get me a new hubby. It's <laughs> always when they think that you've moved on, they feel like you are no longer available to them, that's when they want you back. So that night I said that I'm going to my friend's birthday. He said to me, oh he wanted to join. And I thought about it, I was like, oh should I invite him? This will be the very first time that all my friends get to meet him. I was like, okay, let, let me invite him, but under one condition. The thing was, there's this pattern between me and him previously where he likes to drink and drive, which pisses me oh off. When he drinks and drives, he drives like a loony as well. On those occasions, it's always just been me and him. Now I think about it, I'm like, I'm so stupid to put myself through that. At that moment in time, oh, this is just him. But every single time he does that, we argue like a massive argument. In the past, I've like left the car and all that sort of stuff and let him drive off. But on this occasion, I said to him, I wanted to change. I was sick and tired of this is not going to happen again. But on this occasion, I had a friend that was going to be joining with me to this party because she stayed overnight and we agreed that that night I wasn't going to drink so he can drink so I can drive the car home. That was the plan. Set it in stone. I said it's really important because my friend's going to be coming with us. There's a difference when it's just me and you. We're risking our lives. But when there's other people involved, that is when it's gone to another level and I will not tolerate that. Oh, that's very honourable of you. Pat on the back to you. My friend, she had all her bags and everything put into his car because she stayed the night at my house. This is my really good friend. She used to always stay over and have uh, girly nights with me and we became really good friends. So he came and pick us up. We went to the party, had a great awesome time approaching the end of the night. This was in Camden, so we went to Zakazulu. Oh, okay. What's it called? <laughs> I don't know. I've never been to Camden. Never set foot in that place in my life. It's not Zakazulu, okay? If you guys don't know my pronunciation, I was hoping my sister can correct me. But this time, she's out the loop. I would actually recommend it. It's like an African Chinese style vibe. Oh, okay, cool. It's really good. It was around about 3 a.m. in the morning. We approached the car. My friend was coming along with us. All my friends left. This is the very first time I've been to Camden as well. As we was approaching the car, I said, give me your keys. He was adamant. He's like, no, you are not driving. I don't want you in my car. I don't want you to drive my car. I don't feel safe. I'm like, what the hell is this 360 turn? This car is technically mine. The thing was, he borrowed my brother's car. My brother's MP3. MP3? MP3. <laughs> MP3. The BMW. It was nice. It was a convertible, okay? So we went to the car. He went crazy. He was like, no, you cannot drive. And I said, what? What are you talking about? We already had this agreement. I made sure I didn't have fun for you. Like, no, this is crazy. We agreed to this, you have to give me the keys. He went berserk on me. I went to the driver's seat and I sat there and I was like, no, you are not definitely not driving. Give me the keys, I'm gonna drive. I'm not letting you step a foot in this car. And this is our form of getting home. He started getting into the car and pulling my arms like this and like putting his leg on the door of the car and like pulling me out. And you know your bitch is strong, right? <laughs> I was like, no, no. My friend, she was feeling oh, so uncomfortable. That one was so awkward for that. And it was a convertible. There was only two doors. She sat at the back. And I like, just sitting there quietly and she was just looking at us and we were going crazy. He kicked me basically. Oh he God. kicked me twice. It wasn't painful. <laughs> but I go exaggerated. <laughs> I was like, it wasn't painful, but it was the emotion of what are you doing to me? Yeah. Like, why are you doing this? And I started busting out in tears, crying so much, because I felt like this is embarrassing. I think it's different when it's just you two. Not you except, but like, you can you can face it more, but in front of your friends, it's like a whole nother level. I've had the arguments in front of me and Graham as well. You're just so aware that other people are there, and you just know that they're judging your toxic relationship. Like, you know it's not 
the healthiest one is probably not one that you talk about to your friends and when it's like exposed you just know yeah, all the was, different judgments gonna yeah. come your way i just felt so sad and i was just crying i was like why are you doing this our car we was kind of blocking this alleyway because the car door was open this car came behind and he was like he needed to get through past this little alleyway the car just stopped two guys that came out and they was like talking to him like what are you doing yeah. this is your girlfriend why are you doing this how could you treat her like this and a complete stranger coming to my defense made me realize what the fuck am i doing some random stranger cares more about me than my own boyfriend oh. the one that say he loves me the one that say he cares about me oh, the, one that say, me cry. the one that said he'll do anything for me the one that i said i'm gonna spend the rest of my life with i was just sitting there crying that was like a wake-up call and i was like no i cannot do this do you know what the worst thing was when the the guy I said that he went to the back of the car opened up the boot got my friend's luggage out and chucked it like across the freaking field i was just like what the fuck are you doing he went to the driver's car seat through the window he pointed straight at her like this and go get the fuck out of my car disrespected her so much felt so bad for my friend and my friend she didn't react whatsoever i said to her come on let's go I felt so bad for her when it's between me and him he talks to me like that it's a different thing it's a different ball game when he does it to people that I love and care about. It made me feel like, you fucking don't deserve me. I will not tolerate this no more. Mind you, this is 3am in a random place and Camden is meant to be known as quite a rough area. And we end up walking from where the car was parked all the way back to the club. They're likely to get us a taxi. And while I was walking, my making my way, this is what solidified everything that's going through my mind. I was walking back to the club with my friend behind me and I was just crying so bad. All this random stranger looking at me like, why is this girl crying and thinking there's something wrong with me. Next thing I know, I looked to my left and I saw him driving past me. He had his convertible, Dan, at fucking 3am, <laughs> blasting like rap music, thinking it's tough. He looked at me, he just drove straight off. And I was like, I'm never, ever gonna forgive you. I'm never, ever going back. I remember that car journey home when we got in the Uber. I was so ashamed to look at my friend. I knew what she was thinking and all I could just look out the window and tears just tumbling down my face. And I was just thinking, how could you do this to me? And I'm never, ever getting back with you. Never, ever. That was the, the breaking point. It shouldn't even get to that point. Now, I'm sure there was many other toxic times. That's when you just know you can't put yourself through this anymore. My sister has so many other stories. So if you guys <laughs> like that, I'm sure she could do that. A week later, he called me. He messaged me. He became a psycho. He stalked me. He had a fake phone number. Because he was so close to my family, he kept coming around. And I was like, I do not want to see you. I do not want to hear you. I do not want to know that you exist. It is over. He invited me to like dinner. How I'm so sorry. I wish I changed. It was just too late. In our household, people were telling her to go back to him. I don't know what it is about Asian parents, but they think it's ride or die. Like once you're together, that's kind of yeah. like it. Obviously, I was engaged to that person. There was a lot of family attachment and a lot of families involved. So that breakup of relationship means everyone's going through that relationship with you because they thought that he was in the family as well my mom and dad treated him like a son when this happened they was in denial they, they, they all think it's the same old thing they're gonna get back together i'm really proud of myself that i actually stood my ground and didn't go back it was like a whole two years where i consistently run back and forth back and forth i never thought that i would actually leave him if i'm honest with you it was that moment in time when i realized i deserve better than this i have to say i've grown a lot and i've learned a lot from that relationship Although there were so many things that I went through, so many pain, so much anger, so many heartache, but I, I wouldn't change it for the world. Because of that, it made me such a stronger person. And I know that I would never tolerate that. Is this the first time you heard about my breakup? I heard about it before, but probably not as in, in detail. Depth. I remember the relationship being really, really toxic. And it's so hard when someone that you know is going through that. They know what they need to do. They yeah. get manipulated back and they feel like that person will change. Sometimes you feel like you've spent so much time over them yeah. already that you don't want to waste all that. I was always hopeful. Hopeful that there's a change. Hopeful that he will see the goodness in me. Hopeful that he would somehow want to be better. I also felt that he was going through so much of his own battles as well. I don't know why there's this thing where I feel like I consistently want to help someone mm. and it's not my place to help. They need to help themselves. And I felt that because he was battling so many issues, I felt that I could be that saviour. I felt needed. I was his backbone. I made him feel secure and he made me feel valued. When I rethink re about it, I felt that I wasn't worthy of love and I felt that he was the best thing that I could find. I just couldn't let go, but there was just so much entanglement in our life financially home wise 
family. They bought a home together, guys. And she had wedding dresses. Like, where's your wedding dress now? Back in the garden shed. You know when you've gone through so much with someone, you're just like, I guess this is it. This is my life now. I'm very proud of you for making that change. And hopefully that story can inspire you. Hopefully you're not going through all of that for you to realise. A really toxic trait is jealousy. This is something that I personally would say that I'm not a jealous person, but I have been with people who are jealous and I've seen relationships where the other partner is really, really jealous. That might be valid if there was a reason to it. I just feel like jealousy can really ruin a relationship. The trust is the one thing you have in a relationship. And if you don't have that, it's really hard to yeah. gain any more from yeah. that, you know? As a person, they should always be your right hand man. They should always be there. They should always want best for you and should never think of you in that light. If you maybe have gone through cheating, you decide to stay in a relationship, that is something that the other person who did that act on you needs to really reassure you. They need to like, then, show you that they changed, not making you feel insecure. Maybe you are the jealous one. Mm. You need to really self-evaluate. Has your partner did anything to make you feel that insecure? Maybe you need to work on yourself. You need to be able to build that trust. So if you decided to forgive that person that has cheated on you, you need to work on building that trust and not to bring it up every single yeah. day because otherwise that, that is- push the other person away for sure. I feel like if you keep blaming them or something, they might as well just go and do it anyways because you're blaming them and you're just gonna push them. I'm sure that's not the outcome that you wanted. Mm -hmm. Unless you have like solid proof. If the other person cheat, you shouldn't self blame. A lot of us women, we tend to self-blame and think that we're not good enough, not giving them their needs. That's or we're not we... pretty enough, other person got bigger boobs or whatever. Yeah, we always tend to compare and no, it is not your fault. They have a mind of their own, they are responsible for their action. If they love you, they wouldn't do this. You just gotta put yourself in, in their shoes. You love that person, would you do that to them? Exactly. And if you wouldn't, then why do you deserve to be treated wrongly? We've answered what a toxic relationship is. I think the more important question is how to get out of a toxic relationship. Yeah. Should we give yeah. some tips and tricks? A lot of times when you're in a toxic relationship, you just try to make the situation sound better. When you're in a toxic relationship, you never think your relationship's toxic. You're Oh no, that's just a one-time thing or oh no, he does all these other things for me. He does love me. And I don't mean my sister say like love is just not enough sometimes. Like there's so many more things like respect, trust, communication. And if those core factors are not there, why are you together? And it's yeah. something that you guys need to sit down and maybe talk about. We don't think about compatibility. That is the most vital and important part of a relationship. When you're compatible, you don't argue about all these stupid things. Yeah, and or even when you do argue, the other person should balance you out if the other person knows that you're stressed about something or your first instant reaction is to lash out or whatever the other person should not egg that on they should be like okay calm down let's talk about this in five minutes and then naturally that would make you be like okay it's yeah. not gonna be fire versus fire you know yeah. firstly talk to your partner communication, communication is key write down what you're not happy with and discuss it stand your ground yeah. give it a time limit we consistently go oh next time next time and that next time becomes five years later you wasted all that time in your life so you'd say to that person i want to change and it, not just you it'll be me both of us need to work on this and we're going to give a time limit say three months and in that three months at the end of that you judge and say whether it's successful it's not successful whether you can deal with it and then if you can't you have to discuss about how to amicably split when you're going through that motion it's important that you have friends and family around you to support you be that shoulder to cry on when you're going through all this emotion because when you feel lonely you tend to run back to that person so you need to keep yourself consistently occupied busy like think what can you do for yourself i actually think breaks can be really really healthy you need to do a break properly not when you're like still shagging on the side this would be like a break where even if it's just a week two weeks apart from each other you're focusing on your life they're focusing on their life and then after two weeks you might meet up in a busy place and you can actually discuss see did you actually miss each other did you actually prefer the other person not being a burden and hounding you all the time mm. having that break apart that can even make or break your relationship yeah, i remember that sense of feeling when i broke up from my partner i just felt like a weight has lifted off my shoulder and that's when i knew the decision was right people have different communication styles and when you have an argument some people can actually sit right after the argument and just talk things out. I know for me, I could never do that because I'm such a hothead and I have to learn ways to shut yeah. my mouth because I can say really horrible things. So for me personally, I always have to say, please stop talking to me. I don't want to talk to you right now and I'll talk to you when I'm karma. We always never go to bed angry. So it's always within the same day. For me personally, we need to have some time 
even if you're just sitting in the other room or we're in yeah. the same room, we're not talking, then that's when we reevaluate yeah. everything. After a little sit down, I know that I think more effectively and I'm less like hot headed. Mm -hmm. But at that moment in time, I felt it was so hard. I wanted to like, get that person and fight it out. If he's walking away, that means he's not willing to fight for this relationship. I needed someone to communicate with me differently rather than walk out, say that I'm not walking out on you. I just need to sit down. I just want to go to another room. What he did that made me really angry was he left the house completely, disappeared for days. How about if you still needed just space, rather than leaving the house, go to another room and say, I'm not leaving you, I'm still here. But I just wanted to be a bit of time to calm me down. Then we'll come together in like two hours time. So you don't feel like that person just abandoned you and you feel like you're fighting for this relationship. Oh no, he's going to leave me. I mean, that's yeah. the consistent worried about because he always threatened to leave me. And I was like, no. <laughs> now you're just like, leave then, go. Yeah. It's really important that you work on you. Sometimes when you're in a relationship, you think that your whole identity is this relationship. No, both of you guys are two separate individuals that come together to make a good uniform and good partnership. And hopefully make both of your lives better. If there is a burden, one person's burdening the other one, and, or like it's both not working together, that's when you unfortunately need to face the music. You might be better off apart. And I personally feel like if you love the other person, you'd want the other person to be happy with or without you. Another form of communication, because I know some people are not good with words. Sometimes with Grant, he doesn't know how to communicate. So it might be better to write down bullet points, to text. Some people even write letters to each other, just to efficiently communicate better. There's so many different ways, and obviously every relationship is so different. So I tips is not gonna be like a one size fits all. Yeah. All of these things is definitely you know, food for thought. When you break up girl, work on that body, mm -hmm. new diet, work on that new fashion show that you're gonna be walking on the catwalk. Exactly. Do your hair, have a new makeover and you'll feel banging. When you get that attention you will feel so much more worthy. He lost out basically. You exactly. are worthy more than this. Yeah. There are plenty of fishes in the sea. Don't think that this is the one and only person for you there's seven billion people out there there is bound to be someone for you you may stay single for seven years like me <laughs> and never find another fish <laughs> there's loads of fishes you just don't want the fish only fish is here <laughs> so important when you go through that time and you blossom you spend that alone time in yourself that is when you truly, truly grow and you truly understand yourself and you truly understand your own mind. You shouldn't need another person to make you feel whole. You should both be whole together. Join and then you get an even bigger empire together. It's really important to know your worth as well because sometimes I do say that us as girls, we put a lot of value in our other partner. Like the other partner is such a big part of us, which of course, if they're bringing you all these amazing things, that is like an amazing quality to have, but you should also feel whole in yourself. A lot of us are a bit scared to maybe be on our own. We get lonely sometimes which is fine it's normal it's actually part of the breakup process to yeah. cry it all out so remember that you're a bad bitch at the end of the day you can go out there put on a bit of makeup do what you need to do to feel confident whether that be focus on your body focus on your career all because i'm making money girl when you have everything that's successful in your life you will not think about it twice it's mm -hmm. when you feel low that's when you start running back to that person when you work on your body your mind your spirit making that dollar yeah. you'll have many people that's knocking on exactly. your door and then you probably attract a whole new lease of men or a new yeah. lease of other people now you're giving out that aura of like i've got yeah. my own shit going on like what are you bringing to the table i bring too much to the table when you bring too much to the table you're consistently thinking they're never good enough <laughs> never win <laughs> anyway guys i hope you enjoyed that topic i shared you my experience on toxic relationships and how you can get out of it i hope that video helped you guys out i feel like this video is just just a long ass story time. I feel like this video would really, really help anyone out there that's maybe suffering through this or you might not even know that you're going through a toxic relationship or you know someone that's going through a toxic relationship, you can send this URL link to them and be like, girl, get the hint. Like, look what who I had to go through. <laughs> okay guys, so I know this week is not really much of a vlog, but I feel like we had so much to talk about and time has just ran away with us. Please let us know if you guys enjoyed watching these kind of videos where we actually sit down and chat and talk about topics. Very casual vibe where we're just sitting here doing nothing and talking to the camera. Yeah. I think that you guys relate to us so much better in that yeah, sort of environment exactly. where it's not professional lights ever going on everywhere. We're just like girls chit-chatting away. Sharing our relationships and maybe sharing our point of view. Maybe it can help you out and open your mindset a bit more. Sometimes you can be a bit clouded in your judgment. You can feel like this is the only life you're gonna live and this is it, but we're here to tell you it's not. You deserve better if you're going yeah. through anything like this. So. Change is possible. Anyone has the capability to change whether you want to or not. That's a good note to leave on and thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you guys next time. I love you. Bye. Bye.